We're doing main card of UFC Fight Night, Holloway Rodriguez. It's episode 68 of the Beefy Boys Breakdown. My partner Harrison will be joining me shortly. What up, Instagram? What up, YouTube? Yeah, and uh, anybody watching this, you know, go get really helps us out. Go subscribe, Beefy Boys Breakdown on YouTube. YouTube. And, but yeah, we appreciate everybody that watches and listens to Beefy Boys Breakdown. I crack one of these Stellas. I'm here. Episode 68 of the Beefy Boys Breakdown. Going over um, all the way, Rodriguez fight night. We got Song Yudong. I'm still only 23 years old. That's crazy to me. Crazy, um, crazy. 15th ranked Bantamweight um, versus Julio Arce, plus 115. And I thought this fight was cool because this fight was like our hypothetical arguments that we have every week about Bantamweights and the back end of it and who's unranked and who's ranked and, and all. We always love to talk about the depth of the Bantamweight division and that 15th gatekeeping role is probably no more important in any other division than it is the Bantamweight division. So the fact that Song Yudong has that 15th ranked spot, being only 23 years old, and there is a million killers chasing that number. I mean, the that's what I would say. Bantamweights, it's one of like our favorite topics on this podcast. If you've ever watched before, you've heard us talk about like unranked Bantamweights for days. So, like, but it's true though. Like, they, like those unranked bantamweights include the likes of Sean O'Malley. I mean, that's the most obvious, you know, fish in a barrel example. But I mean, it's a because it's such a good example. Like, a guy like Sean O'Malley is unranked in that division. I mean, just shows the depth of the division. So, Song Yudong, fifteen, and it is interesting. I wanted to hear your thoughts on this. So, every week we we have young bantamweight prospects that we fall in love with. Julio Arce, he got the shot at the at the ranking, the crack at the ranking. Like like uh I think, I I think like, that says a lot. Like I think that says the UFC, like like I think that was a huge badge of honor. Like I think there's a million Bantam weights that they could have given that that crack at the rankings to, and they wouldn't have been wrong for it. And now, but but I, I wanna ask you this though. Okay. So Julio Arce's first fight in the UFC, it's a win over Dan Ige. That's pretty huge. Uh, was that another way? Is that feather uh, way? let's see? This fight would have been at um, it was at yeah, featherweight. Yeah, feather correct. Yeah, featherweight. Yeah. Featherweight. Featherweight. So, I mean, that's an awesome win to think that you were up ten really pounds and beat win. right, and then beat Daniel Tamer by submission. The next fight after that, who is okay. David Tamer's brother, so that's another good win. Uh, lost a split decision to Mar- Marlon Marais' younger brother after that. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. Then KO Julian Arosa in his fight after that. Good win. Uh, then lost a split decision to Hakeem Dawudu, in which I'm pretty sure I scored that for Arce, if I do remember correctly, because that was back in uh, November of 2019. Um, and then beat Andre Ewell by KO, and then has this fight last night. So I don't know if he's necessarily I, I, the most I think deserving. The Ewell fight was. was was his first fight at Bantam, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I think he looks so good that they are trying to figure out where he's at in the division. Yeah, right, well, right I, think they, I think they were doing some hardcore MMA math with the, with the yes. EGA win and the yes. featherweight and how it translates. So, And he's put in some work for him, right? It's like, like the fucking mob boss. He put in plenty of work, you know, uh, as far as who we're going to give a shot to, who we're going to do a favor to, because that's what it was. Now, I just I want to I don't maybe it seems weird that we're talking about this as much as we are but I if you truly truly understand the layout of the bantamweight division that gate to the top fifteen of that division is more important than any other fifteen gate like I will make that statement proudly put my name on it and so the fact that they gave that shot to Ari say like what do you mean shot it's a fifteenth rank guy I'm telling you. If, if we were talking light heavyweights or middleweights, I would be right there agreeing with you. But in the bantamweight division with a long list of prospects and, and just freaks and studs that are not ranked in that division, who got that crack? I thought, like, just can't be understated. And I definitely wanted to spend some time talking about it, which we have done. Um, but, yeah, man, um, so Song Yudong, man, um, I, round one was competitive as hell. I thought it was pretty goddamn tough to score. I'm excited to hear how you scored it. Sure. So uh, I, I thought super good round, right? Like, and honestly, RC yeah. striking was way better than I thought it would be. Yeah. Because I knew Song Yudong was going to come out with some fire striking. But also in the stats, when you actually look at it, 
he was super active, Arce, but he wasn't actually really landing a lot of those strikes. A lot of those were like yes. glancing or kind of whiffing off the edges or yes. just, just not really connecting very well, right? right. Whereas right. on, on Yadong, same amount of volume, but was actually connecting with a lot of those shots he was throwing, I yeah. thought. That was my deciding factor, and I could be wrong, but I think Arce may have even had the numbers in that round, but when it was just that classic of when Yadong would land, it looked completely different than when yes. Arce would land. Like you said, a lot of Arce's were partially blocked or glancing shots or slipping off. or None of them was landing that flush or that impactful, whatever word you want to use to describe it. But Yadong had some straight cracks that he got in that I don't believe Arce was able to return. So, But, yeah, but yeah super competitive round, super fun round. I think we both saw it the same way. Those body kicks from Yadong were pretty gnarly as well. But, yeah, 10-9 Yadong, I think we both saw it the same way. Super gnarly with the body kicks, and every judge also scored at 10 9 Yadong. So, um, not that the scorecards were actually going to be necessary in this fight, but I think it's important that we're all in lockstep. And I think it's important, though, that we told the full story of Arce. It was, it was competitive. Like, Arce had a good first round. Yeah. Like, like, it wasn't like a, a round to like hang your head about. Like, he, he brought the, like, it was it was a competitive round. He, he, he did lose it, but you know, he, he fought well in it. And uh, in round two, man. A minute and 35 seconds in, or probably about a minute and 25 seconds in, uh, the head kick followed by the right hand, which is just a yes, hell of a combination. So many fighters, when they land a head kick, sit back and watch their work or sit back and wait for a ref to come or see what happens, watch if the knees wobble. You know what I'm saying? Which rightfully so, it's not so often a head kick lands flush, and usually it is a fight enders, or maybe a guy goes for a walk-off type flex, but – the fact that Yadong went straight to a right hand, almost as if it was a combination, right? Like, it was really cool just to see that level of focus and not taking your eye off the ball and then not getting out of the moment. Like, I don't know. I mean, the, the, you know the, what the I, end it, kick followed by the right hand impressed the hell out of me. You know what else I would say about that is that when you look at the differential between an elite striker and a pretty good striker, it's pretty much that, in my opinion, is that elite strikers Ooh. continue to throw combos and don't take any snapshots of their work. They literally just throw until you're finished. Because they're not impressed, right? Because like it's that. not, yeah, like they're not, like they've done that so often. They're like, okay, this is just what I do. Like I'm going to keep doing this until I land the one that puts you out. And then when I put you out, like you're, it's Sean O'Malley's that way. Yeah. McGregor's that way. Even Poirier and those guys, like most of those guys at the top, uh, uh, Max Holloway is the prime example of it, and we'll get to it, but he literally never takes pictures of his shots. Like, he is so active with volume, it's insane. Yeah, you know, I feel you, man. And uh, I'll make, yeah, I'll, I'll make another cringy skateboarding comparison. Like, when you want to, when you watch a really, really good skateboarder skate in person, and they'll land something that's like better than anything you've thought, even thought about trying, and you'll be like, whoa. And then you'll see them, and they'll be like, fuck, like they're not happy with it. Like, because, like, their standard for themselves is so higher that, like, even like, absolutely the best, the best thing you've ever seen. Like, they, 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 there's something they could have done better. So it reminds me of the, the the top end elite strikers because, like, yeah, I think a lot of these guys when they land a head kick, they're almost like surprised that it worked. Like, oh, surprised shit. they landed like, it that, rather than rather than throwing like a combo. Yeah, and, and what we're getting at is Song Yudong. It looked like business as fucking usual. He landed that head kick. Followed it up with the right hand. It was the beginning of the end. I think there was a few more finishing blows, but that little combo head kick right hand was pretty much what won him the fight. One minute, 35 seconds into the second round. Super impressive. Defended that ranking. It's at only 23 years old. And I got to say, as a, out of all the bantamweights that we jerk off, maybe we um, owe Song Yudong a little session because, I mean, it's some. You know, he defended that ranking. And we're always saying all these guys deserve to be ranked. And he said, hold on, motherfucker. Or do they? Is it, they? is it time that we feed Frank Yeager to the back end of the Wolves? Get a little 12 versus 15? See if Song Yudon can start to b climb his way up? I don't even know if I want to see Edgar fight again or if we will see Edgar fight again. Like, it's I, tough. You know, it's, I mean, it's back-to-back, -back, like, spectacular knockouts. Like, really close together, if you ask me. Um, yeah. No, yeah, not, way too close. Like, I, mean, I would like to see Frank you know, just like, be Frank, done, if I'm being quite he's honest. 40. He's 40. Like, and he's been knocked out so much. Like, his MMA miles are crazy high. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm not, I'm not going to co-sign that one. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, Song Yudong, knockout win. Impressive as hell. Doesn't get a bonus for that. That's somebody else that I thought could have potentially got a bonus. I agree like, with I mean, that. That was impressive as fuck. I mean, maybe they want to say, I mean, 
competition level, but Vegas disagrees. I mean, plus 115, they had it as a coin toss, and he dominated the fight. I mean, as I said, round one was competitive. But, but yeah, I mean, high on your dog, right? Like, I mean, he performed well enough that when I'm saying all these unranked guys should be ranked, I need to, like, remind myself, like, could they beat Song Yudong? Like, that's, like, the definition of gatekeeper. Like, all these guys that were high on, can they beat Song Yudong? And I don't think he's necessarily that far off from like a Jose Aldo or a, or a Pedro Munoz or Cody Garbrandt. Like he's not that far behind those guys. It See, just I'm shows high, you. How... I'm higher on Aldo than those other two names. Well, I mean, Aldo's number five, so that makes sense. You know what I mean? So, like he was the highest ranked out of those names. Would... But at the same time, it, like, would you think that if you put Marlon Marais and Song Yudong in a cage, that one guy is viciously outmatched? No, but Marias is what? Is that three losses in a row? I mean, you know what I mean? A lot of these, yeah. that division's in this weird spot where there's a lot of name cachet on losing streaks in the, in the top and middle ranks. And then there's a lot of just young, as we talk, that's like our favorite talk, like young Bantamweight Lions. But uh, there's so many of them that would that could easily beat those those older guys on any given night. Yeah. And, well, Bantamweight's and, crazy, too, because the top five is pretty much the ascension from – the young guys that have not climbed their way in. I mean, Jan, Sandhagen, Font, Valashvili, and Dillashaw, but Dillashaw has all those years off recently that you know, kind of conserved right miles. Now. Yeah. And Arce, I mean, there's a million fun fights you can still make with him with all of those For guys sure. we just alluded to, all those unranked bantamweights. I mean, it's the you stay that's that's a, another tournament in and of itself. That's a tournament that nobody would want to find themselves in. I mean, that's uh, the real to crack the top ever. fifteen. That that's is a terrible in tournament. The bucket right there. That yeah. That yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, but I guess we'll keep it pushing. I don't want to, but I can. We can make a random <laughs> way breakdown. Like we do. We love to do that. 